Hi, everybody. I'm François Oyer, Director of Treatment Information and Access at the European Organization for Rare Diseases, or ODIS. And in this video, I'd like to explain to you one of the many outcomes of the HTX project, Health Technology Assessment. And in this project, we are developing tools of interest to you, one of which is how to select a patient reported outcome measure of interest to you, to your disease, both for the daily care, the monitoring, the health management of patients in the clinic, or in clinical trials to measure the efficacy of a medical intervention, a medicine, radiotherapy, or other types of interventions. So if you bear with me, I will share my screen and you will arrive on, um, you may be interested by HTX. Here it's a specific site with an app to help you select uh, a patient reported outcome measure of your choice. So that's the homepage. And if you go directly to the select app uh, site, this is what you will find, uh, a site uh, with an exhaustive list of all publications uh, mentioning how patient reported outcome measures were validated for different conditions. And in the context of HTX project, uh, we worked on head and neck cancer, on long COVID, on chronic diseases in general, on diabetes, on lifelong disorders, myelodysplastic syndromes, mental health, multiple sclerosis, and we have other diseases and, and surgery and, and generic scales. We also have a tool where you can search by type of outcome you would like to measure. And here I think you will agree that the list is quite exhaustive. And there are patient reported outcome measures for the vast a majority of all symptoms, conditions, disorders um, of interest to you, covering cognitive and psychological aspects, depression, emotional distress, fatigue, energy, vitality, sleep, health literacy, uh, knowledge of disease, health-related quality of life, health quality of life, more specific to some diseases, incontinence, bladder dysfunction, gastrointestinal functioning, swallowing, pain, discomfort, perception, vision, hearing, speech, physical functioning, activity, mobility, recovery, rehabilitation, satisfaction, well-being, sexual function, social role participation, performance, social support, relationships, spiritual function, work productivity, uh, self-management, self-efficacy, self-care, daily living, etc. So, for example, if we select um, as a condition multiple sclerosis, and and a mobility, activity, physical functioning. Uh, you will find a list of different scales that exist. And uh, maybe we can look at the patient specific functional scale because it's really a, a simple tool and you will immediately understand how this tool is working. So first you will have access to all the scientific literature about this scale. Uh, where you can find more information uh, in different scientific libraries on articles published uh, on, on, on this scale. The first link up there is the access to the scale itself, to the document that you can download to understand how this uh, outcome can be reported uh, by the patients or uh, here um, mediated via a, a clinician it could also be sometimes uh, a nurse. So that's the document for the person uh, helping to report on, on, on these functions. And, and this one has been designed for the clinician, but it can be easily adapted for a patient to report himself. So the initial assessment is where you identify 
three important activities that you are unable to do or you have difficulties with the result of your condition. In this condition, it's multiple sclerosis, but it can be used for many different conditions. And that's for the initial assessment. So it's you who uh, select which activity are a problem in your existence, in your daily life. Um, and it can be very specific, like you have difficulties in holding dishes uh, when you are cooking, or uh, if uh, you are fishing often and you can no longer fish, uh, that's something impairing your, your, your daily life, which can be activity two. Um, it can be uh, when you are dressing up in the morning or taking your clothes off in, in, in the evening. That can be activity number three of interest to you. Uh, for some, it can be the ability to use a keyboard, uh, or uh, any type of uh, activity you expect to see improvement. So you first select three of these activities and you fill in the table in line one, two, three here. And then the next question is the initial assessment. And the first question is, um, so you have difficulty with the activity in question and how would you score the difficulty on a scale from zero to 10? Zero being unable to perform the activity and 10 able to perform the activity at the same level as before the injury or before you, you had the, the, the disease. And you rate for each of the three activities of interest to you, or you can have more, you can have five or even seven activities and you rate the initial assessment the first time uh, you are using this tool uh, from zero to 10 for each of uh, the activities of interest to, to you. And then you will have follow-up visits where you write the date of the visit. And again, for each activity, you assess again from zero to 10 where you are. And if, for example, you are using a new treatment, um, you may see an evolution, or if you are not using a, a treatment, you may also see an evolution. Uh, in some cases, your assessment will be worse than the previous visit. Uh, sometimes it will be stable, and sometimes uh, there are spontaneous improvements. Um, and at the end of the follow-up period, as decided with your clinician, uh, the clinician will calculate um, the sum of the scores, the, the scores on each line, and divide by the number of activities. And uh, this is explained in more details in an article uh, how to calculate the baseline at the initial visit from the end uh, of the follow up period. So that's one tool to measure. Uh, any activity of importance to you that can be affected by the condition you have or can be improved um, by a new treatment you've started to take uh, recently. And you can navigate uh, this site uh, to find all the prompts of interest to, to you. There aren't prompts for all conditions. Uh, for uh, very rare diseases, usually it's more difficult to find a specific problem for the condition. But you see the, the list of patient reported outcomes, as we just saw in this example, can be used for multiple sclerosis, but can also be used for different diseases. It's important that you define yourself the activities which are impaired. <coughs> so if uh, we select uh, chronic diseases, for example, and uh, here you have uh, fatigue, energy, vitality. So you, you, you have other types uh, of uh, scales of tools that uh, you can look at and uh, discussing with clinicians, with researchers and with other patients, you can maybe discuss and decide which of the tools seems 
uh, the best, the most relevant for the research question you, you, you have. And you can read uh, the literatures, the literature uh, to discuss if it's adapted to your condition, if the tool has already val been validated, for example, by a regulatory agency, or if it has been used in a clinical trial to measure the effect uh, of, uh, of a medicine. And if it hasn't, then, and if there is a company, a developer, uh, intending to develop a medicine for this condition and using one of these patient reported outcomes to see if there is an effect on symptoms of interest to you, uh, you can seek, or the developer can seek for scientific advice to the European Medicines Agency and propose to use this scale or this other scale and have a dialogue with regulators where uh, they can explain, no, you cannot use this scale exactly as it is for the following reasons. And this is what you need to do uh, in order to be able to use uh, this tool for this uh, precise condition. Sometimes some adaptation is, is needed, which can be translation in one language where the clinical trial needs to be run. And uh, not all the tools have been translated to all uh, possible languages. So sometimes the adaptation is more a language adaptation. Sometimes it's a cultural adaptation, but sometimes there are some questions more specific to the condition uh, that need to be, to be modified and, and then tested. So I invite you really to navigate uh, on this uh, app. So again, uh, the website is 3W Prom Select App, and uh, as shown here. And if you have any question, any comments on this tool, please don't hesitate to contact us at our office, and we will forward your question, your remarks, your comments uh, to the researchers who develop this tool as part of uh, the HTX project. And I thank you very much for your attention.